Hey everyone, Trevor Daly with Maglot. Hey, I am excited. We have another How I Shot It, and guys, this is a special one. We actually have the amazing, well, two guests. We have Jesse and Moira LaPlante and Jason Vincent. Thank you so much, you guys. <laughs> and Bob Ross. Thanks for having us, yeah. And Bob Ross, exactly. Hey, I, this is going to be a fun episode, actually. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I even made myself really small so I can give you guys all the screen space. Uh, that's how special you are for me. But uh, hey, before we jump into the images, of course, I have to show everyone where to find you guys. So let's jump over to the internet and let's pull up your pages real quick here. We got Jason, Northwest Arkansas wedding photographer. Of course, your amazing images. By the way, it's funny. I feel weird even introducing you guys because everyone probably already knows you because we share so much of your work. It's so incredible, you guys. Um, so Jason, there you're at. Uh, anything you want to say about your website there, boss? Mm, nope. <laughs> like that. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of time on it. My website yes. speaks for itself. <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome. Hey, I even have uh, Jesse's uh, overlay over here. Let's we'll take that off. That's that's great. Um, <laughs> so, if Vincent Images, guys, go check it out. It's amazing. Also, Jason, this guy is incredible at Instagram. So, if you are trying to up your Instagram game, this is the guy to go follow. Uh, check this out. My goodness, I think you've surpassed Magmod even, which is incredible. <laughs> With just by yourself, doing it by yourself, that's incredible. But guys, go check him out. He's incredible. Uh, Vincent Images underscore Jason. You probably get asked all the time, why did you choose underscore Jason instead of just Vincent? So, so my wife has the Vincent Images. Um, and whenever we first started, I just had like a random account that I was just kind of sharing my own work to. And Vincent Images was like the conglomerate of both uh -huh. me and my wife's work. Um, and I eventually started sharing more of my work just on my personal one. And so I wanted to tie it to the business. and so. Because Vincent Images was taken, I just did Vincent Images underscore Jason. Underscore Jason. And that's the one that took yeah. off. Love it. Awesome. Good stuff, you guys. Go check it out. And speaking of checking it out, also, you got j.laplant.photo, Jesse Moira's account. Same thing. They're incredible. Not only that, they do a lot of like uh, kind of behind the scenes. Same with Jason. I think that's why both of you, both of you guys resonate so well with photographers is that uh, you all of you are just sharing like reels and and carousels of behind the scenes and not only incredible images but also educating photographers which is awesome so um I'm having, having follower envy now going from jason's over to ours right i know it's amazing hey uh jesse moore i i jumped over and it's funny i was actually looking at this page over here called education which i want to ask you about here in just a second but before i do that i'm going to jump to your main site um, and by the way, guys, this is a little segue. This is one of the images we're going to talk about towards the end. So stay tuned for that if you're inter interested in learning how to capture those amazing images. Um, but uh, incredible stuff. Love it. Where are you guys based out of? We are near Colorado City, which is a really tiny town in southern Colorado. But uh, we live on a 50-acre ranch now. We recently moved from Boulder. And we're just enjoying the, uh, the country life. Love it. I love it. So I got to ask you guys, I jumped over this education page. In fact, I opened two of these up here. You guys have a couple workshops coming up. It looks like one in October, and then I saw one in November. You guys mind if I, I give you the mic and tell a little bit about what you guys have going on here? Yeah, please. So the first one that you're seeing right now, Fusion, that's uh, with our good friend Christian Cardona, in, who's from Colombia, and some other guy that we, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I think he's big on Instagram. I think he's big on Instagram. <laughs> he has the big in France. He's big yeah. in France. Not so well known in the U.S. Um, I love yeah, it. And Jason Vincent, of course. Uh, so it's going to be the three of us in Woodland Park, Colorado, which is near Colorado Springs. Three-day workshop. Uh, Moira and I do a day. Christian does a day. Jason does a day. It's off-camera flash. It's business. It's marketing. It's, it's finding your everything point. you Editing. might want to have, plus a lot of time of with things. everybody that you can, you know, like during meals, sit down, ask questions, not only of the other students, but the, the um, instructors as well. So it's really just, you know, we're an open book and, and willing to talk about anything that you want to know. And it's in the mountains in Colorado. It's beautiful. <laughs> We can turn it into a vacation. I think everyone who signed up so far is coming in from out of state. So yeah, we're looking looking forward to that. We do it every year. All right, I'm looking at my calendar right now. <laughs> <laughs> 17, 18, 19. I bet you could play directly into the spring. Denver, too. Denver is a hub for pretty much every airline. Yeah. So uh, right. It's easy. So it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. 
Tuesday, right. Wednesday, Thursday, October That's 17 and 19, yes. And we can't Just, promise anything because it's always different every year, but it may be peak Aspen season at that point. It may be peak Aspen season. I think that it's around 8,000 feet mid-October. That, that could be, yeah, that could be leaf peeping season for sure. That's awesome. So that, that one's fusion. That's that's pretty incredible to have the three of you. Uh, Christian Cardona, again, for those who are catching a one of these How I Shot It's for the first time or recently introduced to MagMod, Christian's an incredible photographer out of Columbia. And then we got LaPlante and Vincent. You said Vincent was some guy from France? Is that right? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I, I, which is ironic because I, I'm the one with the French name. But uh, yeah. Yeah, and there's only a few spots for that one. So, no, uh, I love I love the fact that the you guys are all teaming up and, and putting that together. That's incredible. So um, speaking across the pond, I didn't saw that you guys had this one as well. Uh, Jason, why don't you tell us about this one here? Yeah, so basically, uh, you know, the three of us are going to be teaching at a conference uh, in the UK called Nine Dots. Um, and so as part of being out there, we figured it'd be a good idea to offer a workshop. It started off where I was going to teach a workshop and they were teaching a workshop on the same day. And we decided, hey, let's go ahead and just combine that way that everybody is there. doesn't have to choose between us and they just get the best of both worlds. Um, so it's going to be a one day sort of condensed version of what the fusion is going to be. But um, you basically get to learn from all three of us in one day. It's going to be jam packed. Um, it'll be a long day, but it'll be a fun one. That's uh, again, absolutely incredible. You guys, I, I just think it's so cool that you guys are teaming up and putting those together. It's kind of like, um, I, I remember trying to do workshops on my own and oftentimes you, like you were saying, like at dinner or whatever else you were trying to get questions and fill them and help them. But to have three of you to be able to answer that and, and be there and assist, it's like, not only are you getting good education and being able to, you know, listen and learn from you guys, but then just to be able to pick your brains, like and have three or four of you, like, that's well, great. I also think one of the things I appreciate about um, teaching with Jason and Christian and, um, is just that there are a lot of things that we do similarly, and mm -hmm. there are other things that we do completely differently. So being able to have the students see that, that, you know, we all have, um, you know, very distinctive styles, but it's sometimes some things are consistent between the two of us some, or the three of us, some things are different cool. um, and being able to pick and choose like what resonates with them, I think is really valuable. I love that. Yeah. That's, that's, that's really cool. What an MVP of MagMod users. My goodness. Crazy. Um, awesome. Well, guys, I if, if it's cool with you guys, can we jump right into these images? We have a ton to go through. Going. Let's do it. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. And and I say we have a ton because I, what I love about this is I'm, I'm looking over here at my screen and you guys sent me, I think almost every image has a behind the scenes of some kind to show everyone kind of what's going on and how the image was created or even sometimes even a video as well. So um, I'm really excited for this episode. I think there's gonna be a lot of great content that people are gonna pull from it. So again, thank you guys for taking the time to do this. So let's start with this image right here. Uh, I believe Jesse Moore, this is one of your shots. Tell us about it. Yes, so this was the first shoot. We had the pleasure of using the new XL mods. So this is the uh, XL sphere. Uh, which we really like because, um, you know, typically in these situations where we're doing the more standard portraits, like this is kind of like the thing that we shoot after the grip and grin, sort of a basic portrait, we would break up the softbox. But in Colorado, in the mountains, it can be really, really windy. And more mm -hmm. if, if she's holding this giant softbox, it acts like a parasail and she flies off like Mary Poppins. <laughs> so the sphere, very low profile, even though it's the extra large sphere. Um, but we, we like to use that and sort of feather the light a little bit. It, it's not a substitute for a softbox, right? If there's no wind, we will still go with the softbox. Um, but it does provide a little bit extra extra uh, diffusion and smooth it sort of at the edge of the frame where it goes from uh, dark to light as opposed to using a bare flash or something like that where there's going to be more specular hot spots and it's going to be a more abrupt uh, transition from light to dark. Yeah, and I think with this one too, we went off site for this portrait. And so again, it travels so easily, um, a little bit easier than the softbox, especially. I don't think we had our vehicle there at the time. Um, so being able to just pack up into a really small package and work on site, off site, that easily, yeah. I think was one of my favorite things. It, it covers now too. So it's designed to use on studio strokes, but what I really like about using it on the mag ring is it completely covers if you have two. Uh, 200 watt second light in that mag ring as opposed to like when we used to have the small one we would kind of you know jury rig it to the side so it yeah. would sort of go over both but it wouldn't completely encapsulate 
both lights so now it fits perfectly on that mag ring and you can use two lights in there on these i love that so the the lights that we're seeing up on top that's two ad 200s is that right yeah they're actually gt 200s which oh, they're are the kikotos they're very similar but we found that they don't overheat in high speed sync as quickly as uh the godox versions do nice nice so speaking of high-speed sync, is that did you guys use high-speed sync for this in order to bring that sky down and stuff, or was that just aperture and? Yeah, so I think that we weren't we were not in high-speed sync here specifically because I had a smaller aperture, so we could kind of see those mountains. But if we're going yeah. for that like f two eight look, that softer, yeah. you know, shallower depth of field look, then we'll definitely want to use high-speed sync, you know, anywhere up to a two thousandth of a second or something to kind of cut down that ambient light. Yeah. You know, I won't do this on every image. It's probably driving some people crazy, but I keep bouncing <laughs> <laughs> between the behind the scenes because I just, the, the fact that you guys are, 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 there's so much that you took out and, and yet it looks so clean. Um, did you shoot a plate shot or how did you get rid of all that stuff from the image? Yeah. So I never, I, you know, shooting a plate shot used to be the kind of way to go, but I would never remember to do that because every one of my frames would be at a slightly different like eye level or closer, mm -hmm. or, you know, zoomed in, zoomed out. So I couldn't take a plate shot for like every different composition. So I used to meticulously like painstakingly go in there and sort of take her up. And now with generative fill in the new Photoshop beta, it's super simple. This took like, I don't know, maybe three minutes. Yeah. It's crazy. I, I love that. It's so, so amazing. Well, it, it works so good for this as well. Even just, I'm looking at, um, where I'm looking at like your feet and stuff. It just cleaned that up and the mountains insane. I love I don't it. Know. I mean, I'm biased, but I think it looks better with me in it. There are sometimes though, when I, when I uh, select her and hit, you know, fill, and then it just puts like a different person in there or, or someone yeah. with a different face or something. And you're like, okay, that's, that's not I, what I wanted, but. You know. I love it. Well, that turned out really, really good. And I, I appreciate actually, because I think, and again, I, I don't mean to talk so much about this one image here, but I appreciate because we have so many great images to talk about, but I, I appreciate that you mentioned that it's not that the XL is not necessarily, it's not a, a replacement for soft boxes. I, I've seen this week um, that we launched the XL, I've seen some people saying, oh, I'm going to go out and compare it to a 24 or the 42 or the 36 or whatever. And I'm like, you can just so you can see how it how it looks, but by no means I wouldn't compare it to say like it's gonna resemble what that looks like. There's benefits of having the XL, like you said, like portability and things like that. But um, but I would I would hope that people you know see the the, the tools for what they're good for, right? <clears throat> so good stuff, you guys, um, and and thanks so much for sharing. It. And by the way, if you guys are uh, have gotten this XL modifiers and you're interested in seeing some incredible shots done with it shot with it i think maybe half the photos that we're going to talk about today are like xl modifier shots so which is really cool i appreciate you guys sending those over um right on excellent jason can we talk about one of your images i'm ready let's do it talk about this one right here <laughs> yeah so this is um a wedding that we shot and it was obviously uh well maybe not obviously but this was a cloudy day there's no sunset or anything like that and so what i like to do is um, use off-camera flash to kind of mimic the sunset. And so what I'll do is I will hide the flash along the horizon line to kind of mimic sun coming through. The problem is, is that this is like three in the afternoon. And so I need Jeez. a ton of power. And so this light is actually the Godox or the Flashpoint uh, 1200 Pro at full power. So this is 1200 watt seconds of power. And um, normally when I do this, I have to use like the metal reflector and I have to like tape gels to it in order to get that like sunset look i like to use a cto gel and stuff but now with the new xl modifiers i have the xl reflector with the cto gel that just kind of clicks in there the 1200 pro has a very large bulb um and so what i love is that the magmod domed gel is large enough to still encase that so there's no um issues with it fitting certain size lights um, but basically I just needed as much power as I could in order to overcome the ambient light. It's still, it's like an overcast day. Um, but even on those days, it's still fairly bright outside. And so what this is, is just 1200 watt seconds, full power with the, um, XL reflector and the CTO gel on it to kind of mimic that sunset look. So Jason, I'm, I'm fascinated that you use 1200 at full power. Um, and I'm curious now what, uh, you, you got, you know, we were just talking, uh, Jesse and Moore were talking about how they, you know, use the smaller aperture and they can see the mountains and so forth. This one with the, the reeds in front, obviously they're out of focus. Um, what did you use the 1200 at full power because you were using high speed sync on this and shot it at a lower aperture or how did you get I would have, 
I'd have to double check, but yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm shooting at a lower aperture and okay. I'd be in high speed sync. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Gosh. And I love the fact that you put it right on the horizon there. Um, because I think so often, you know, we see the sunset shots or we see the fake sun shots and it, it tends mm -hmm. to be a little bit higher. And I like how this one is like, it looks so legit in the position that it's at right there on the horizon. Um, yeah, that's, that's the trick with like recreating sunset is the light placement, um, is what helps sell it. And so getting it a little lower, um, I didn't quite have enough spread to like completely light up all of the, uh, like the grass. So if it was a little higher, you could kind of see where that fall off was. And so getting it down lower kind of helped hide the fact that, that it was coming from an off camera flash. Nice. And for this one, you just use the reflector and the gel, right? Yep. Yep. Very cool. Love it. Good stuff. All right, Jesse Mora, I'm going to pass the mic back over to you. Tell us about this one. Yeah, same wedding as that last one, same location, but just kind of up on the hill further, their uh, wedding party portrait. This is a five shot composite. Uh, we have just kind of one shot showing the, the behind the scenes and where we uh, place the light. So essentially, I'll put the camera on a tripod. We'll get everybody sort of posed meticulously there in that like kind of GQ style. Or it's also kind of like to me, the uh, poster from the TV show Succession. It's a little bit like that kind of vibe if you're familiar with the show. Yeah. Um, so Maura will start with the light all the way off to the left-hand side of the frame and just light two or three people, and I'll take a shot, and then she'll come in, light two or three more people, I'll take a shot. This is the middle shot, the third shot of five, lighting uh, the bride and groom and the flower girl there, and then she'll move on to the next two and the next two, and then we'll just stack those five layers in Photoshop um, and brush in the parts that are lit from each shot. To create and, that file and you're not doing this on a tripod, right? You're just hand holding, trying to be a still. This, or... So this one is a tripod. Oh, I, the... You can hand hold it, and I've done it a couple of times that way. You just have to click that like auto align layers yeah. um, box when you when you do it. Um, but it's it's easier if all the frames are, are exact and, and yeah. not moving around too much if they're overlapping each other like that. But again, using that XL sphere, uh, and in this one, if, if we go back to that BTS shot just for a second, you can mm -hmm. see that. More is kind of instead of pointing the light directly at the subjects, she's actually pointing the light at a, at a point just a few feet, maybe like 12 to 16 inches in front of them, which is sort of feathering it so that it's not the front of the light that's hitting them. It's more the edge of the of the light. So it just gives a slightly more like painterly effect than if you're just kind of blasting them uh, directly. And that's what we like to do with the sphere is try to use the edge of it as much as possible. Yeah, I, I think that's great when you just feather it across them. Um... Love that. I, I appreciate you pointing that out as well, because I think that's a that's a great tip that people need to take away. Hey, I, I, I know this is we typically talk a lot about lighting, but I think one of the things that photographers do struggle with is is posing big groups. When you guys pose groups like this, do you typically kind of tell everyone, like, go stand over there and, and then just fine tune it? Or do you normally like literally, OK, I want you standing here. I want you like how do you normally just start posing a group like that? That's a great question, Trevor. And, and with the, this group, um, so this we've been getting requests for this style of photo at a lot uh -huh. of our weddings this year. So we've had to get really good and really fast at it because it's in amongst all the other photos that we have to take. Um, but with this group, what we do is we mainly get people roughly in the areas that we want them and then we tweak it and Got then it. we'll kind of help them, you know, channel their inner badass and, you know, like talk to them about how it's a vanity fair, GQ type look, you know, yeah. use succession, things that are relevant in pop culture that are going to get, help them understand like what kind of attitude they're channeling. And then, you know, just hype them up and, you know, but also ask them to remain relatively still. This isn't one of those things where they get to change their position every single time the camera clicks. Um, but yeah, so it, it really is, it's kind of, it's essentially both of what you described is we get them roughly in the right place, start with the bride and groom, build build around the couple. Um, we do like to kind of um, mix it up usually with, you know, men and women on different sides and just make it a little more casual. It t I feel like the posing, if they choose their own pose, it tends to be a little more natural than mm -hmm. if it's anything we could contrive, right? Because yeah. not every pose works for every person. Everybody feels a little you know, more comfortable doing this or that, mm -hmm. but sometimes we'll give them a prompt like, okay, this is your album cover. You're dropping your first hip hop LP <laughs> next week. Let's see the pose, right? Yeah. And let me give me that attitude. So yeah, and we'll kind of like, as we're, we're describing it to them, we try to watch them. So you have to be able yeah. to like talk and, and notice things at the same time, because as we're describing, like this is the photo that we're doing, people automatically start like trying things out. And so when you see something, you're like that, 
stop right there. That's that's your pose right now. That's it. I love that. I it, it's funny when you try to get a a group like that, like the bridal party, and they just kind of stand off to the side, like waiting for you to call them over, like to say, like you stand here and do this, and you stand here and do this. And you're like, guys, just come here and get kind yeah. of relatively where you need to be, and then I'll I'll kind of fine tune you from there, but. Um, I appreciate you talking about that a little bit because I think, again, that is something that I think a lot of photographers just struggle with, especially when they're getting started. They're kind of like, how do I get going with groups? So it's good to hear yeah. how other photographers are doing it. So love that. I will say you have to not be shy because with something like that, um, posture, I think, is the number one thing that's mm -hmm. going to make a difference. And I remind everybody, like men, women, like roll your shoulders, stand up straight because everybody has a tendency, especially you know, post-pandemic to kind of hunch over because we've all been over computers for so long. So yeah. posture is a huge thing and just opening up your, you know, broadening the shoulders so that it feels very powerful. And don't lock the knees. We don't and need don't anybody, lock the knees. anybody passing out halfway through your composite. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Thank you for those tips. That's great, you guys. And again, Moira, I think the shot with you in it is the best one. So I, I think so too. We don't need to see the bridesmaids on the left. No. no. Right. <laughs> Check out the concentration on my face. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was pretty good. I wish I could easily zoom in. We would definitely do that. <laughs> right on. Jason, I'm going to hand the mic awesome. back over yeah, to you. So, um, Tell us about this one. This is obviously from the same wedding. We've got the same bride here. Um, and what, I, what I'm going for here is kind of a play on shapes. Uh, so we have this like door that's leading down this um, hallway where there's stairs, so I'm up on some stairs. Um, and I wanted to light the bride and there's a door that she's looking out um, that is just a glass door. And so what I do is I have the light placed outside and it's firing through that door, projecting the pattern or the shape of that glass that it's firing through. Um, and what you'll see is that the reason why the light is so far away uh, is because whatever you see with the light, whatever you see through the window from where the light is, that's obviously what's going to be lit with light. So if I were closer to the door, um, the light would spread further throughout the room. So you wouldn't actually see the shape of it. Um, and so what I do is I get my light set up where I want it by just stepping back, back, back until I can see exactly what I want to be lit. Um, and so this is kind of behind the scenes, kind of showing the location. So then I have her set. Um, and what I don't show is I take a test shot and I'm like, oh, the light is off by like half an inch. So I have to run down the stairs and run out the door all the way over to my light and fine tune it and then run all the way in and back up the stairs. Um, but it's just essentially a, you know, a boring hallway. But what I'm always looking for is for things that I can use to manipulate my light without having to carry around a ton of modifiers. So I don't carry like big soft boxes and things like that. And so that's why I like the, the reflector and or the XL reflector with the gel combo is it's very small, compact. It goes down even further. Um, but here again, I have the XL reflector with a full CTO gel. And then when you color correct back for her skin tones, all the ambient light inside goes to that nice blue. Jason, and, and this goes for all of you guys, but Jason, I think the one thing that every time I look at your photos, I'm like, how in the world it, you're so good at like creating what looks like, well, and, and I should say you're good at using natural light and flash and balancing the two and like using both. Um, but you're so good at taking a, a scene like this that would otherwise just be like, okay, that's a pretty boring hallway. And then making it this incredible scene where it looks like it's just light coming in, like this hard light coming in from the outside or whatever. And I, it's insane, dude. I don't know how you do it. Yeah. That, and that's honestly, that's exactly where the inspiration comes from is you, I, and I talk about this all the time, just like in my education and, and stuff like that is just go through everyday life and look for interesting light and be like, how is that light created? Hmm. If that light wasn't there, how would I recreate it? So, you know, if it's a lamp shining through a window or if it's a, the sun shining through the window or whatever, um, if that light wasn't there, where would I need to put my flash? What color is that flash? What, how's that going to manipulate the, the natural light and things like that? And so when you're walking through a boring hallway and you see an open window that's just clear glass, like what would it look like if a sun was shining through that? And that's kind of where the inspiration comes from. That's that's great. I, I love it. I love that. And and this, uh, I feel like I've seen a shot that you did something similar. Is this like a venue that you shoot at? Yeah, this is a venue. It's like one of my favorites to shoot at because it's literally five minutes from the house. Uh, it's called Osage House. Uh, and yeah. Those are the best, dude. The closest yep. venue I have is 25 minutes. And every time I book a wedding there, I'm just like, yes. Yep. Like, oh, the, wedding start, 
got my coverage starts in 30 minutes. I better start getting dressed. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome now meanwhile uh jesse and Moore, you guys just moved to you said like far away from everything right so I, what's the closest venue to you guys now it's probably well I, ironically <laughs> we have a wedding venue on the ranch it's called hatchet the area we live is hatchet ranch and there's hatchet ranch events and it's like five miles it's down a dirt road so it takes like 20 minutes it's next to our mailboxes it's right had, next to our mailboxes had yeah. you shot so, weddings there before you moved there no never because it's so it's just kind of so far out here in, in uh wow. you know farm country that we'd never even heard of it before but now we're, like we went over there and had a meeting with them a couple weeks ago and we're trying to get some weddings there so that we don't have to drive you know there. to Esther park or vale every single weekend but let's be honest, like our nearest wedding venue is an elopement right outside That's our right. Yeah. If you walk right through this black <laughs> curtain behind me, there's a, there's a view of Pikes Peak, the Sangre de Cristos, and the Spanish Peaks to the south. So it's not too shabby. That, that's awesome. I I imagine those, you know, wedding venue or the Hatchet Ranch or whatever, I, I don't even know if they realize the lottery that they just hit with you guys moving there and, and being able to shoot events and create images for them. Like, I hope that they recognize how amazing that, you know, the type of stuff. That you I, don't, I don't think they get, like, cared at all. Who we, no. like, no, they no. they, they like, probably. Like, how much do you charge? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And they're like, will, will you buy an advertisement in our marketing magazine or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you want to come over to do a styled shoot maybe <laughs> for us? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right on. I'm making that up. They're very yeah. nice. All right. Well, and, and, and speaking, this is what that stuff that Hatchet Ranch could have, right? Um, <laughs> tell us about this image here. I love this shot. Journalism moments. So all the shots we're showing are done with the sphere. Now, the first two were done with the XL. The rest mm -hmm. of these were done with the, the version one, the smaller sphere, but uh, obviously they can be, they're interchangeable. Uh, so in these situations where we're shooting in like an all white tent, which doesn't happen too much in Colorado because usually it's like a mountain venue and they don't want to like sully the, you know, landscape with a white plastic tent. But when we do have these types of weddings, what we'll do is set up uh, two lights with spheres and just point them basically up into the corner, either at the ceiling or in the corner of the tent. And since the spheres are omnidirectional, it basically just bounces light everywhere and it turns the whole tent into like this big softbox so that when you're shooting moments in journalism um you know the light is covering everything you have total coverage from end to end of the tent so when you have these like sort of quick uh you know fleeting moments of the flower girl running in to steal pie because her mom told her she couldn't have pie she didn't finish her dinner and of course she didn't finish her dinner um, she got her pie <laughs> i don't have to worry is my light covering that because the omnidirectional modifiers bouncing all around the all white tent i have everything covered uh, from end to end you know uh, what i love about that is is when you see that like make it simple on yourself right like you don't have to because sometimes if you're pointing your your stands for example down at the dance floor then you kind of have like a, a certain area that this is where my light is contained to and so if i'm shooting and i see these moments happening it's a little bit harder to capture unless i have somebody like more running around the light stand right but but to be able to just point it up and bounce it off the ceiling, I I recently did a wedding. It was in a ballroom, and that's it was so funny. It was a, a, a friend of mine that he's never gone out and shot with me, but he knows that I I do a lot of stuff with Magmod. And literally, we came out those white ceilings. I'm like I'm pointing these straight up and bouncing it right off the ceilings, and just filling this. It was like a medium sized ballroom, so very similar size to what you guys have here. And it just makes it so much easier to be able to capture everything that's going on. Um, so I love that. Yeah. yeah, no, and I think as much as we can, we try to keep our lighting setup simple mm -hmm. so that we're not wasting our brain space on, okay, what's that light at? And do I need to turn it here? And how do I get over here? And yeah. you can really focus on seeing this thing happen. You know, if you were fiddling with your lights, he probably wouldn't have clocked this little girl eyeing the, the pie table and he wouldn't have yeah. been ready for it to, you know, to capture this moment. And there are a lot of situations where we want more, you know, focused light where we'll use grids and things like that to just focus on what's important and kind of kill the ambient light if we don't want to see it in the background. Yeah. Um, but it's like, we, you know, every, every wedding we kind of go in with a different approach and like, let's try something we've never tried before, you know, and yeah. it's always contingent on the location and, and what you can do. So it's like, we kind of have our, our reception lighting boiled down to five things, but within those five things, there are you know, infinite variations. So it's like, we probably have 500 different types of lighting 
reception lighting just based on the venue and what's going on. Yeah, moving things around a little bit. I actually, it, it, you mentioned kind of a more focused light. I think one of the images that we're going to talk about coming up here soon is actually one of your reception shots where you did that. You know, people are partying and so forth. So we'll get to that image here shortly. But um, I love being able to see that, that the variety and, and seeing these types of images where it's like, hey, we're going to make this simple and we're going to capture this beautiful, fun shot where we got this nice soft light because we're taking advantage of, of the room. So good stuff. Love it. All right. I, I like this. I, so I set this up, guys. I hope you don't mind. But when you guys sent me images to talk about, I set it up. So I'm just bouncing back and forth. So um, so that means, Jason, you're up. Tell us about this incredible shot. Yes. Um, all right. Back, same wedding uh, again. Um, and this is actually the door that enters the chapel here. Um, and what I was trying to do and what I was trying to show off is obviously like I was inspired by the geometry of this door. Um, and the, like the gold things that you're seeing on the door, it's actually, uh, metal. So it's a little reflective. Um, and so what I have is I have the light firing towards the couple. Um, and that's how she's getting, like, he's got this like nice rim light and that light's bouncing off of his face, filling in her face with that nice soft light. Cause his face is nice and close to her. Um, but then it's also bouncing off of her dress to also light up the door. Um, and that door is a little bit reflective. And so it's picking up all of that, like highlights and stuff like that. So, so this is one light. Is that right? Yeah, this is, this is one light. And then they're all, they're being filled in there, like underneath a, like a canopy. Um, mm -hmm. and so they're being filled in by the natural light from outside. Gotcha. Um, it, it's funny the way you describe it, people are probably like, wow, I wish I had doors like that. But <laughs> but again, when I saw this video, I'm like, if I saw this, <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't think for a minute to create an image like the one you created, dude. It's like insane. I mean, I just yeah, you there, yeah. So they're just underneath that canopy, so they don't really have any sort of like overhead light there. So now I want to bounce back to this image, so you can see. I mean, that's 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 insane. I'd love. I mean, it looks like you probably did some kind of help bring the the gold color out. Um, yeah, so there, um, it's just like a, just a white balance adjustment a little bit, yeah. um, just to make, well, they're also being lit with a full CTO gel. And so it's picking up the warmth from that CTO while, and you can kind of see that on the rim light of her face, how, um, yeah. the backside of her face is a little bit warmer. Um, but then on the front side, that's natural light. And so I'm just, ex I'm just white balance adjusting for the natural light that's filling in like the majority of their faces. Um, and so that CTO gels keeping everything else warm. And then that gold is obviously a gold color picking up a really warm tone. That is so pretty, man. So cool. And I love that we're the behind the scenes. So again, that we can kind of just see, you know, what it actually looks like. Where, by the way, yeah. are you and again, this is the, this is the 1200. Um, and this is, this is also still at full power. Gotcha. How, how do you have your camera mounted under your lens? Are you wearing something on your chest, like a GoPro on your chest? No, it's a, uh, I don't have it here next to me. Um, it's a GoPro mounted to the quarter 20 tripod mount on the bottom of my camera. Nice. And, so then, I like... just, and then I just flip the video upside down or have it set in camera to where it goes ah, go upside down. I gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Most people mount them on the top through the yeah. hot shoe. They have a special plate, but I always need like an off camera flash trigger. And so I mount it to the bottom. That makes a ton of sense. Wow, I like that. I actually, I enjoy it on the bottom because then you can kind of see the lens right here. It kind of helps you frame like what you're looking at. I don't know, I, I yep. really like that. That's cool, very cool. Man, there's all kinds of tips people can <laughs> Good stuff. All right, Jesse Mora, tell us about this one. And again, you guys, this is, I, these are one of those images where people take it on their cell phone and it looks nothing like this, you know? Um, so uh, this is one of those, those deceivingly simple shots that actually most photographers have a really hard time doing, but I love it. Tell us about it. Yeah. So it's a, a kind of a tricky situation, especially if you don't use flash because the background is so much brighter, like probably yep. two to three stops brighter than the interior of the building. And it's a beautiful view and it's a cool venue because if it rains, you can still have this outdoor kind of vibe. Uh, but for shooting it, it's like either you can expose for the background and turn the couple into silhouettes, or you can expose for the couple and totally blow out that background, or like somewhere in between and try to HDR it. 
But what we do in these situations is we'll set up, uh, and I think I did not include a BTS for this one, unfortunately, but we set up two lights at about eight o'clock and four o'clock. If you're okay. using the clock face metaphor, you imagine the photographer at six and the couple in the middle of the clock face, the lights are going to be at four and eight. So kind of off to the right and the left, yeah. um, both with spheres, again, to sort of spread the light more evenly and omnidirectionally around the whole room. Again, sort of the opposite of focus light because we want to light up everyone, all the guests and the whole wedding party and the bride and groom and everyone. Um, and those lights are also kind of feathered across. So what I mean by that is the light that's on the right hand side of the room is actually pointed to the left hand side of the room. Okay. So to the left hand bridesmaid and the light that's on the left hand side of the room is pointed to the right hand side of the room. So again, that just sort of increases the, the even light spread uh, across the entire entirety of the room. So, um, did you have to Photoshop your stands out or, or were they out of, no, the they, were, they were out of frame, yeah. out of frame. Okay. And so the so, light that we're seeing like on the back of their hair, do you think that came from your flashes? Ah, so there's also, uh, I think the sun was sort of setting out there to camera left more at like, okay. I'd say 10 o'clock on that clock face. Got it. Uh, so that's providing almost like a third. So it's now like kind of a hair light type of situation. Yeah. And it's also creating a little glow on the right hand side of the frame there. So yeah, it's sort of like two lights, eight and four. And then the third light would be the sun, which is acting as like Got a flicker or a hair light there. And, and, uh, you know, it's a little bit warmer too, obviously. You know, and, and the thing is, these people, obviously, they pick a venue like this for the view. And so if you capture it and you don't get that view and you just have like a bright white sky behind them, it, you really miss out. Or, you know, people will capture it and they'll try to bring it back. They'll kind of like, OK, I'm going to try to bring down my highlights and my whites to try to expose and bring out this this mountain. But it, then you just get a hazy range in the background. You don't get this, you know, this beautiful shot. I also noticed it's all in focus. So you must have used like a F8 or something to, to, which tells me your flashes are probably pretty high power too. Probably pretty small aperture. Yeah. For the depth of field and also for the reason you mentioned, but also depth of field is, you know, it's a product of the fact that it's like a 14 millimeter lens too. So mm. even if you're shooting at two eight with 14 millimeters, a lot of it is still going to be kind of in focus. That but, totally makes you know, sense. Mentioned yeah. using the flash during the ceremony, real quick. Oh yeah, we get a lot of comments like the yes. emails it's, and things. I am kind of shocked at how um, controversial this is. That some photographers just refuse to use flash during the ceremony because they think it's distracting, uh -huh. and we've never had any complaints. <laughs> well, also, it's a very small percentage of the yes. shots taken, right? Like, yeah, no, I, I think when people yeah. think that we're using flash during the ceremony, that they're they're imagining a dark room like the one we're standing in, and that we're shooting at full power. And I agree that would absolutely be distracting. But yeah. you have to think about it. And one, you know, your couple is so into the emotional moment and what's going on, and ideally the audience is too. But if not, the audience is looking out at the sun at that point. So their right. eyes have dilated and we're matching what the ambient light is because we want it to look really natural. And so the, the flash popping off is not that obvious. And yeah. so I, I encourage anyone who is afraid of using flash during the ceremony, especially if you're in a situation like this, absolutely use it, try it out, um, you know, see how it goes. Because a lot of times I think that's just a, a self limiting fear that we have. Yeah. Um, and this, you know, like you're talking about people, our clients pick that venue for that view. And I have talked to couples on the phone who reach out to us because they say, we've looked at other photographers that we liked, but when we saw their ceremony photos here, they don't get that background like you do. We want that. Well, so, you know, we pick our moments, like we're not firing oh, yeah. flashes during the prayer or, you know, the sun, like yeah. maybe we wait for a laugh or something like that. So it's not as noticeable. Mm -hmm. And if there's video, we coordinate with them so that, you know, we're not popping off the flashes in the middle of the video. Yeah. But, uh, you can definitely sprinkle it in here and there. All you need is like one cool shot, right? Yeah. That's awesome. Love it, guys. Thank you for sharing that. Good stuff. Jason, this image, I saw this and I'm like, who has a parking lot that looks as cool as this? <laughs> well, hopefully I, whenever you see the, uh, the BTS video, you'll see that it's not that cool of a parking lot. But for me, the, the cool thing is that it was empty. Like this is a very small elopement at this wedding venue that's actually... You know, it's big enough to house probably 500, 600 people. And so they have a fairly large parking lot. Um, and I just love that it was all completely empty. Like there's some cars behind me. Um, but at this point, I think the majority of the guests had already left. And so 
I wanted to kind of show off just like the, the geometry essentially. I actually, I want to bring up the, the video um, because again, it's one of those where I was like, who, like, how do you do this kind of thing? So I, let's play the video and then why don't you describe exactly what you're doing to set this up? Yeah, so again, backlight, uh, this is the 1200 Pro still. Uh, it's at full power and I'm just using it to backlight them and then also kind of spill onto the pavement just to kind of cut them out against the, the dark concrete. Um, and then I had moved my truck over a little bit so that I could stand here right in the center. So I'm climbing up and standing on the top um, like rail bed, like of the of my truck here um, and then just shooting down on them. And I think for the final result, I'm actually holding the camera up over my head. I'm just trying to get as high as possible so I can just look down on the entire part of the parking lot and get them framed properly. <laughs> so, so setting your client in the parking lot like this and shooting this shot, do you ever turn around and show them the camera so they can kind of see, or is this just a surprise where they get the gallery and they're like, what the heck? Yeah, some, it depends on where it is in the shoot. Um, I prefer to surprise them where yeah. they just kind of look at it and they're like, oh man, what the heck? Because we'll, I'll do like a live slideshow reveal like so they'll see all the images to, uh, with me and stuff. Um, but the, if it's at the beginning of the shoot, I'll show them an image here and there and it kind of like instantly builds trust because sometimes I'll have them like the, the image that we talked about earlier where I was standing in the hallway on the stairs, like that's a boring location essentially. Um, and so I showed her that image and she was like, oh, if you got that here, then I'm game for whatever. <laughs> I t you know, what's interesting about this? Well, first off, is this a scenic view in Arkansas? I I've never been to Arkansas. <laughs> <I'm just> um, <laughs> I mean, they're, like, so the, the, Im the image where I was faking sunset and there's all the like the pretty um, like tall golden grass and stuff. It's literally just to the left of this parking lot. Really? So, like, there's some nice Actually, and, like rolling hills and stuff like that. Have has every image that we've seen of yours has it been the same couple? Yeah, this is all the same couple so far. Golly, what a gallery that you're presenting to to these people! Amazing stuff, dude. Thank you. Um, so, so you had a CTO behind them, and then um, you, natural light in the front. Yeah, you know, and it looks like maybe you you did some dodging and burning a little bit, kind of bring them out, darken down the yeah, a um, little bit of um, dodging just to bring them out of the shadows a little bit, um, mm -hmm. and then like contrast and saturation to 100 for just the parking lot because in, in post and I didn't I kind of noticed it uh when I was shooting like all of this like white speckled stuff that's all over the ground what I think is it, it's um stuff that they had spread out for like ice or snow or whatever that had stayed mm -hmm. in the ground and when, one of the times I had shared this someone commented thinking that I'd like photoshopped in the like white speckles or like why would there be white speckles all over the concrete and so I linked them to the to the video to show it's like um but in post, I saw that it did kind of look like, you know, a galaxy or like stars or yeah. something like that. So I really yeah. wanted to really like dramatize that. That's crazy. You know what I love about it too is is the high angle that you got. You get these nice leading lines, you know, mm -hmm. for the longest time, you know, 10 years ago or whatever, it seemed like everybody was shooting on train tracks. And then finally, you know, people were like, stop doing that. But, <laughs> um, but that's what they loved was they loved those leading lines, right? And that's what you're getting in this parking lot just because of getting that high angle. Um, Jason, you're going to uh, inspire uh, thousands of photographers around the world to be shooting in parking lots from now on. I'm sure a couple of <laughs> that's my favorite thing to do is find a spot that no one would want to shoot in. And that's, that's what I, that's what I pick. I love it, dude. So cool. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jesse Moore, this is the image actually that I had mentioned, um, that I'd seen that, uh, can you have that more, it looks like more gridded light or something, but, uh, this is, this is really cool. Tell us about this stance shot here. Yeah, so actually, uh, we don't have a grid here. It is still just a sphere, but I think the fact that the sphere is so close now to the subjects. Yeah. And so the ratio from you know light to subject, subject to background is such that the you know inverse square law and all that the light's not affecting the background; it's only affecting the subjects. Um, and we will use a, a grid sometimes during the dance party when it's just like two or three people dancing together and doing something crazy. But if it's like five or six people like this. We'll pop the grid off and just use that sphere again to kind of spread the light out and reduce the hot spots in there so we can get light on, on everybody who's who's doing something cool. In this case, uh, you know, playing around with glow sticks and, and singing too. Looks like maybe Journey. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> don't stop. There's no such thing as South Detroit. The PSA, there is no such thing as South Detroit. <laughs> Every time I hear the song, I'm like, dang, dang it, Steve Perry. South Detroit <laughs> is Windsor, Windsor, Ontario, Canada, my friend. 
<laughs> That's funny. So it does look like Junie right there. So um, I, again, for those who have, okay, so it was MagSphere and, and closer to them. I love how you mentioned inverse square law. So if that's a new word for you guys out there and you're watching this, go check that out. It's an important concept in lighting as far as knowing um, how that light's going to spread and you know what's going to be dark and what's going to be lit, et cetera. But um, tell people, what did you do to get the, the streaking? Um, kind of explain that process. Yep, so it's just, uh, I, I think probably around... Uh, maybe a 20th or a 15th of a second exposures where I'm literally just taking my camera and moving it side to side like this while I'm shooting. So people are looking at me like I'm a little bit crazy probably, right? Like what's he doing oh, with absolutely. this camera? Is, yeah. is he doing yeah. video? Like, this confused. guy does not know how to take so photos. So both <laughs> at, slightly, at slightly slow shutter speed, you can kind of streak the ambient light in the background, yeah. kind of like this cool reddish orangey up lighting back there. Um, and then the, the flash is popping off at the second curtain, so rear curtain flash. You can do it at the front curtain, too. It has just a, a similar but kind of opposite effect. Or you can manually pop it off in the middle if your exposures are long enough. Um, I usually just have mine set in rear curtain sync out of habit. So that's you kind of get the streaking and then the freezing at the end with whatever is being hit by the flash. I, I love, it, it, usually once I get a lot of safe dancing shots, you know, the fun ones and everything's clean and... I, I call this drunk, uh, this is my drunk shooting, where usually it's because they're drunk by that time, and then I also yeah. look drunk because I'm doing that kind of weird stuff. Um, I like to even zoom in, kind of like, so I'll kind of go like this, you know, as I'm <laughs> taking a picture of somebody, but um, but I love that effect, and it, they always tend to be some of my favorite photos. You just have to shoot quite a few of them because you don't know what's going to hit just right, yep. you know. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. About yeah, 200 of them <laughs> I think you also have to be prepared to stay a little bit longer. I know um, some photographers, I, I heard in a Facebook group, someone was saying that uh, Colorado dance parties are terrible. And then I found out that they leave after like 30 minutes. And it's like, no, 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 no. You have to wait until the yeah, foam yeah. sticks come out. And like, <laughs> the first 30 yeah. minutes is terrible yes. typically because not, you know, they, they don't have enough liquid, you know, lubrication yet or whatever it is. <laughs> and then it's, it definitely doesn't really pop off until like the last 45 minutes or whatever in our experience. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, we always stay at the end for that reason. You know, if people, have, if, if, if they've watched all these episodes of How I Shot, they've heard me say this many times, but my favorite time to experiment with lighting is during the receptions. And that's why every single wedding, I stick around till the very end. And it's usually because I'm just playing with light, trying new things out and, you know, and just trying to see what works and what doesn't work. Um, so, you know, tell yeah, your couple. Like, you're never going to have a couple complain about you giving them more time. Totally, so, totally. Uh, give them their time and then take some time for you and try something out. But it's also time for them. I mean, and it exactly. also goes back to the philosophy of like under promising, over delivering. If yeah. they, we do all day coverage, but if you do, you know, hourly, eight hours, 10 hours, whatever, and then you give them an extra hour to play around for, for yourself, yeah. but also give them extra photos, like they're going to write you a great review and recommend you to all their friends because you went above and beyond. You know, the, the time that I hear people uh, compliment me the most is as I'm packing up my gear at the end of the night. And they're always like, you were an incredible photographer. They haven't even seen my photos yet. <laughs> yeah. the, fact, the fact that I was there hanging out with them until the very end and taking pictures and drunk shooting and all that kind of stuff. Like they just, they get so excited by that. And, and so you got to stand apart, you know, be different from everyone else. So yeah, they can tell you care, you know, you're not just going yeah. through the motions and like checking your watch and trying to get out yeah. of there as soon as possible. Like you're, you're in it. So even though they have not seen a single photo you've taken, they're like, wow, you did such a good job. And then at that point, I'm always like, oh shoot, I didn't have a memory card. And can't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like to say I, something. <laughs> I usually, I usually like to say, yeah, beginner's luck. This is my first wedding, you know. <laughs> Good stuff, man. Love it. Love it. Love it. All right, Jason. Another. Right, we're, 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 we're back. We're still at the same wedding here. Same wedding. <laughs> <laughs> same door, it looks like, actually. Yeah, same door. We're, we're, now, we're, now we're looking through the door. Um, and this is, I've, I've taken this image before with like a, I poured water on the ground. And so um, this is very, very similar shot, but I still wanted to do it. Um, just to kind of test out the uh, the new XL reflector, <clears throat> um, but what this is is this is basically just under a covered canopy area, um, and then I have the light inside the building, and then I have her up against this like um, window that's inside the door. So what's happening is the light is behind her, 
um, I have the reflector collapsed down and pointed up. And so what this does is it helps give me a larger spread of light, whereas if I had just the reflector as it normally is, um, it wouldn't, I wouldn't get as much spread out of it. Um, but what's happening is the light is pointed up towards the ceiling and away from her a little bit. Mm. Um, and then that light is bouncing all around this little room because it's basically just like a narrow hallway. Um, and she's close enough to the window, but that there's not like any sort of like weird reflection stuff, but she's far, far enough away that the light's bouncing off the wall and filling her in with light. And then because I'm using the full CTO gel, when I color correct that, um, all the ambient goes to blue. Jason, do you find, it, it seems like every image that you've shown so far, you've had a full CTO or half CTO or some kind of CTO in the reflector. Is that is that your kind of go-to? Do you use a lot of those? Yeah, that, that's basically like 90% of everything I do is like flash behind the couple with a full CTO gel. Wow. Yep. What, do you, what, what camera are you shooting with? Um, my main camera body is the Sony A9 right now. Uh, but I do a fair amount of uh, work with Sony. And so I get like cameras and stuff. And I don't remember, this might be either the A9 or the um, the R5. I'd have to I'd have to look at yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, Jesse and Mora, you guys probably agree that Jason obviously has a nice camera. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, that's doing most of the heavy lifting, let's yeah. be honest here. For sure, <laughs> for sure. sure. <laughs> that camera has 100,000. All I do is I just click the dial over to like this one, and then I just take photos. Yeah. <laughs> I, use the, I use the one on my dial, not the M or the A. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Actually, I think we have a behind the scenes video of this too here. So yeah, yeah, here it is. I click play here. So, yeah, so this is just me showing that it can collapse down. And so I'm getting a little bit more spread. It can go up a little bit further and reflect backwards a little bit. And that's that's the 1200 right there. That's the 1200. Yeah, and it, again, this is at this is at full power because if you look outside, like it's it's still pretty bright out there. You can stop the video. This is just me kind of posing her now, telling her where to stand and stuff. I, I again, I just laugh though that it's like some brides like, oh, we're gonna get married, and Jason's like, come here. There's this parking garage that has this really cool glass door. <laughs> you know, and they're they're probably like, okay, and and this this mom or whoever this is is probably like, yeah, this is her uh, mom. She's like, this is where you're shooting. I had to be like, mom, <laughs> go further away. Yeah. <laughs> seriously and then she's like and you took him out in the parking lot a second ago like you know and, and they, they got to be kind of laughing at this whole thing but then when they see the images i mean literally it's just it's like pieces of art you know um no. it's it's crazy the stuff you're creating by the way i i, I gotta give you kudos for removing the trash bin as well good stuff and the sign you removed yeah, the I, I think it's actually just hidden behind that pillar ah no very good love it <laughs> Good stuff, man. Love it, love it, love it. You guys, this is all, uh, again, this is, you talked earlier about those classes, the workshops, and I'm like, this is the kind of stuff these people can pick your brains about and really dive in and, and learn hands-on, which is just so good. Well, and, and recreate. Hopefully there's, maybe we'll get some snow in, in October. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> we you can know, do you know, this. At 8,000 feet. Yeah, I mean, even like we, last time. we learned so much from these other guys when we, teach workshops. I highly doubt they learn anything from us, but we learn so much <laughs> from them. Right. So I learned a lot like, of things not to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was already being self-deprecating and then you just have to pile on. You just have to pile on, Jason. It's because you pitched him. It was like a slow pitch. You just threw yeah, it out yeah. there and he's like, oh, I'm going to hit this. Yeah. So. I set him up, you knock him down. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so this one, uh, we, we're using, so we're kind of showing like all the different uses we have for a sphere now. And the, mm -hmm. the reason we were using a sphere in this situation is with just the bare flash, we were just sort of illuminating the snow that was kind of around the couple, but with the omnidirectional light source uh, of the sphere, it's shooting light everywhere and we're able to kind of backlight the snow from corner to corner of the frame, all the way top left, top, you know, top right, every single corner, because there was so much snow and I wanted the entire frame filled. Um, and also to kind of show like, you know, how the dance party is still going on there, even though they're kind of oblivious to what's happening with a couple outside uh, and vice versa. But uh, yeah, so typically we would just use like a bare flash or a gel or something to, you know, change the snow to a different color. But here we went with the sphere to kind of spread that light throughout the entire frame. I love this. Where Where is your sphere located? Where do, where do you have the light stand? Is it right behind them? Directly behind the bride. Yeah, probably like 10 feet back there. 
Wow. That is really cool. I love how the fires are still going outside too. Yeah. yeah well, it, it, this was in April, you know, we had had some really nice weather and this uh, poor bride watched this snowstorm move in and she just kind of panicked a little bit, but being able to say like, no, 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 this is going to be great, you know, and take them out. Um, and I think they had custom designed rings that were Game of Thrones related. So to do this like fire and ice kind of thing worked into oh, cool. the theme of their wedding and, and things that they liked. And, and so being able to, you know, use the sphere to really make it feel like this crazy snowstorm, I think, um, really helped out. And this one they printed, I think it was a full spread in their album. So they Spe loved speaking it. of fire and ice, is, yeah. is that George Martin guy ever going to write those two final two books? What's going on? <laughs> What's going on with that? I'm sure that's what this pop, this what the, this video is dedicated to. Would you? To. I mean, if you made that much I, money, he's <laughs> been writing them for like ten years. Jeez, I love it. I, uh, you know, what's fun about these types of images is I just like that you got the couple, and it's like they're doing their own thing. It's like their own their own little world, you know, off doing their own thing, and then everything else is happening, um, which I always think is fun when you have like couples posed and then a lot of movement or something happening on the side. Um, yeah. I think they're always striking images. So good stuff. Love it. Love it. Senor Jason, we actually got two images here back to back. Um, I'm going to show them both. And then that way, as you're describing kind of what you're doing here, um, you know, kind of makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So here, um, this is finally, we're at a, we're at a different wedding. Um, so this is a new <laughs> couple for everybody. Uh, but this is at a chapel that I shoot at uh, quite a bit. And for this image, I wanted the, light to spread throughout the entire chapel and kind of light up all of this architecture and then silhouette them against the door. But what you're seeing in this image is with the reflector, um, yeah, and this one, with the reflector in its standard position, you can see a line kind of cutting through their hips where the light falls off. Um, now, normally in order to fix this, what I'd have to do is I'd have to pull the couple away from the door and then move the light further back so that I could get enough spread in order to completely light up the door. But because the XL reflector is collapsible, instead of having to redo all of my setup, um, and not, on, not only that, but it would make them look larger in the frame because they're closer to the camera and they would take up more of the door being further mm -hmm. away from it. Um, so you kind of lose some of that like grand epicness of them. Um, so instead, what I did is I collapsed the reflector down, which gives me more spread of light. And so this is the result, um, the result from that. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, so just, uh, just the versatility of being able to, as you, so you essentially have one reflector, but it's two reflectors built into one just because you can you can collapse it and extend it. I love that. And then, is, like before, you used some kind of CTO, or was the door kind yeah, of... Yeah, like again, yeah, this is just the this is the uh, reflector with the full CTO attached. Yeah, so and cool. that's how you get the ambient light outside to go blue. So it looks kind of like a... Um, nighttime shot um, and it's close to nighttime because we have another set that we'll go through where it's it's getting close to dark um, but it's still not it's not it's like right around sunset but it's just a cloudy day yeah love it yep really pretty all right Jesse Mora tell us about this one here you want to take this one sure yeah so this one um is actually, I was just talking to a, a, or a lead yesterday, and this was the kind of photo that um, she said she would love to have hanging on her wall. But it's um, what we did with, in, with this couple is we just asked them for their favorite color. You know, and the great thing about the gels is that we have all the colors that they could possibly name. The <laughs> and so we use the sphere to spotlight the wall and then silhouette them. Um, uh, against that that pink spotlight. And so what the sphere does is it makes this nice round spotlight. So anytime we have a blank wall or even just like a rock wall that, um, you know, isn't too craggy, this is a technique that we'll use um, to get a bunch of different um, looks in one place because we can do a photo with them front lit here. We can easily pop on the gel and the sphere, do the, the back lit photo with the um, the spotlight on the wall and just, you know, it's a lot of production value in one place. Yeah, and if you want a tighter circle, obviously you can throw a grid on there and it's still in, con in conjunction with the sphere, we'll have sort of a nice gradation at the edges. Uh, a bare flash is obviously going to create not a very nice shape of light back there. So that's why we're using the sphere here is to, to make it, you know, that circular pattern with the gel. I, I like how you guys also were able to include the city here. I don't know if that was with a higher ISO or slower shutter, but but just including those city lights, you know, and again, it, you get these leading lines. Everything kind of leads to the couple. Um, looks really, really cool. 
Love that. Yeah, that's I think just maybe a, a tenth of a second or, or maybe twentieth of a second shutter there, and just kind of with the wide angle, you know, hand holding very still, it, it's still kind of uh, in focus. Oh, that's really cool. I I'm picking up a theme. <laughs> I'm picking. Hey, don't hide Bob Ross. Um, I'm picking up a theme though. I feel like most of the images I'm seeing, Jesse Mora, I see a lot of the MagSphere, how you're using the MagSphere in different ways or whether it be the MagSphere XL or the MagSphere uh, 2, for example, or even the MagSphere 1 possibly, but the kind of the MagSphere. And then Jason, I feel like for you, I'm picking up this theme of like CTO gels, <laughs> like CTO here, half CTO, full CTO. Is that, would you guys say if you were to pick one modifier, would those be your, your go-tos or is that just, we're just luck of the draw with these images? For me, that's, that's absolutely go-to. Yeah. 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 I mean, for, I think it would be a little harder for me to just pick the one. Um, I, your favorite kid. <laughs> I, I wanted to show kind of all the different uses we have for the sphere, but we, we also yeah. use grids and gels a lot. Okay. We use the soft box a ton if it's a day that's not too windy and we don't have to hike too far. Yeah. Um, we use, we use the, I mean, we use everything. We use the beam. We, yeah. So. You know, now that you say that, Jesse or more, I think you guys might be one of our most featured uh, photographers on the Instagram page. Cause you guys submit a lot of photos, which by the way, guys, if you're watching this and you want to get featured on Magmod uh, Instagram, we have a link in bio, click on that. There's a form there. You could submit images to us. Um, but Jesse Moore, you guys have been so gracious in submitting lots of images in the past, and, and we featured a lot of your images. And now that you actually mentioned using all the different tools, I think that is something interesting that I have seen. Is like it seems like every time you submit something with a behind the scenes, it's something new, you know, softbox or whatever. So you're you're absolutely right. Um, that's interesting. When you mentioned that, I was like, that's so true. I do see. Yeah, I mean, each tool gel. has its own very specific purpose, but then it also has a lot of other uses that if you experiment with you can come up with other other like sometimes we'll throw a gel inside the beam it, with the wide lens to project just a color onto the, you know the facade of a building instead of a pattern so it's there there's a lot of sort of in, innovative things you can do and if you just tinker with it and uh, so yeah just to pick one would be that, that would be tough that would be <laughs> have to sit down and really think hard about that yeah well, that's awesome you guys do use a lot of color as well which is great so Good stuff, you guys. Um, I think we're, we're actually close to wrapping this up, but um, I think we have maybe a couple more images. Um, and, and I know we've already gone an hour, so this is going to be one of those long shows. But um, I, I, I'm so stoked that we get to talk about all this. I just feel like there's so much good content here for photographers. So, Jason, I know with this one, there is like a whole buildup here. There's a whole um, series, yeah. So, um, and I, I shared this in the MagMod group, so you might have seen um, the general idea here. But I kind of I thought it might be beneficial for me to be able to like actually talk through the buildup here. Mm -hmm. um, and so, what it is is the very very first image. This is just ambient light, and so the inside of the chapel is being lit with um, just some uplighting that the chapel has. Um, and the idea here is that I want this chapel to kind of glow against this like blue hour type sky I'm shooting at um probably iso 100 and like one fourth of a second uh and i'm just using my um in-body image stabilization so i can usually shoot at like one fourth of a second handheld with um, no problem as long as there's no movement in the frame wow. um and so i'll do that a lot for portraits um and so the problem here is that you know it's after blue it's like blue hour um but it's not dark enough to where the chapel can glow. Uh, and so what I did is I used my 1200 Pro uh, with the MagMod XL and the full CTO gel inside the chapel to light up, um, light up the inside of the chapel even more so that it actually gets that like glowing feel. Mm -hmm. um, and then I added a, um, a Godox AD200 with a full CTO gel, a sphere and I believe a grid uh, in between the couple and the door pointed towards the door. So this is just that light and not the inside light um, to kind of get this like spotlight um, on the door to kind of silhouette them against. And then the next image is both of them combined. And so this is the final image that I had in mind when I started taking this image. But one thing that I will always do, especially when I'm using two lights and a slow shutter speed is I will add motion blur um, by like what kind of how Jesse was explaining when he would shoot uh, his reception images or like the drunk shooting. Mm -hmm. uh, but this time I'm using it for a portrait. And so I will just manually add motion to the frame 
by jerking my camera up and down. Um, and then I will also just hold down the shutter button knowing that one of my lights is not going to recycle as fast as the other light. And so this mm -hmm. is a way for me to get an image with just one of my two lights, both my lights, and then the other light. So I have different variations and I look at the back of my camera and it might inspire me to do something different. And so what this inspired me to do is just actually get a little closer to the couple because they're a little bit small in the frame. Um, so I got a little closer to them and then did the exact same thing. And what I liked is that on the very final shot where the inside um, light didn't fire, um, you kind of have them silhouetted against the shape of the door and then everything else gets filled in with the streak of the, uh, the sky behind it. But, you know, it's a bunch of different images. I delivered all of these images. Um, and so you just get a lot of variation, especially if you're going to take the time to set up two different lights. Uh, you know, it takes a little time to get everything set up and now they get a ton of stuff and they didn't have to move at all. Right. It's just me kind of playing around and using one light, two lights, but I'm not having to like fumble with my trigger and be like, okay, let's try this light on. Let's try this light off. I'm just relying on the fact that there's two lights with two different powers and they're going to recycle at different rates. I love that. There's one more in this set, right? Yeah, there should be one more. There yeah. you go. Yeah. And this is my favorite one of, of the set just because it is, uh, it is so different. Gosh, dude crazy stuff love it and what a cool chapel too is that chapel in in arkansas yeah it's about 30 minutes from the house it's called mildred b cooper chapel um i this is the chapel that i shoot at quite a bit uh there's another one in eureka springs and another one in hot springs um arkansas That's cool. uh, same architect but they all have a little bit different architecture but they're all this like glass chapel type type vibe it's really neat i love that yeah. good stuff good stuff love it love it love it all right, Jesse Mora, I know I've seen this image before. Yeah, so um, this one is a, a, one of our go-to techniques when we're doing portraits. Mm. Um, and this is also where you're gonna see Jesse holding the light most often, because <laughs> as you can tell, he's taller than I am. And I have a little bit of a hard time getting the light that far up. Um, but with our style, we try to do a lot of off-axis lighting and not that's mm. not only horizontally, but also vertically. And this is kind of the extreme of it. And we'll use this when, with the pose, we have the couple looking at each other because uh, this is a great way to get light on both of their faces. Whereas if we were lighting from one angle or, or like one side or the other, um, one of their heads would cast a shadow onto the other's face. So if we have a pose where they're both looking at each other, we're gonna do what we call boom lighting, which is exactly what you're seeing here. Um, with the sphere, again, we're looking for that omnidirectional light spread because we not only want to light both of them and Jesse has the light, I believe, just like just in front of them. So it's kind of feathering directly down the, the front of their face for a little bit more of a painterly look. It's also hitting that snow wall behind them. So it's similar to that uh, shot with the pink light. Um, it's just not as extreme because we aren't facing the light directly at the wall. Yeah, it's just the edge of the light there is kind of skimming, skimming the background to create sort of a circular light pattern within the within the overall frame. And, and that 12 foot snow wall, that this is in June. Yes. Um, Mid-June. In Rocky Mountain National Park at the top of Trail Ridge Road. So yeah, mid-June, yeah. still have 12 feet of snow. And we'll, we'll sometimes do this boom lighting with a softbox, but because we were on Trail Ridge Road, which is the, the highest continuously paved road in the U.S. And it's like 12,000 feet. Um, so and this was directly windy. off the side of the road. We, so we had cars whizzing past. We wanted to go smaller profile, not quite yeah. as big. Like the softbox would have made it a little bit tricky. You, you know what I love about this kind of this boom lighting that you described is it looks very um, like natural. It, it looks like it was it was the sun, essentially, but allowing you to really make them pop. Um, and then also kind of hitting that that snow wall behind them just a little bit gives them that little bit of that light vignette kind of again, kind of making them pop. Your eyes are drawn right there. You know, when I first saw this, I thought that was rock. <laughs> like that's <laughs> I, I've yeah. never seen snow walls like that in Arizona. So yeah, it's a little bit dirty because it's right on the side of the road, so it gets you know yeah. some of the, the tires kick up on it. But yeah, it's if you go up there in June, you can you can see it. But you know, again, what has amazed me in this conversation with with all of you is that it's like you're taking environments where, again, if I was to the couple, I'd be like, hey, you see this dirty snow wall? We're gonna create a really <laughs> cool image. It's gonna be a piece of art that you're gonna love in your house. You know, or you see this hallway with the trash bin and everything. Yeah. Um, like it just amazes me to, to see how with a little bit of creativity and using light, like the things that you guys are pulling off is, is insane. I love it. 
By the way, Jesse, Moira looked a lot, you know, the image looked a lot better, but I think this was a good <laughs> place to take you out. So. Yeah, we'll, we'll take him out of this one. Yeah, good choice. All right, and Jason, I think this is the last image we have of yours, and then I think we have one more of Jesse and Moira's, but tell us about this one. Yeah, so this is just, uh, you know, the the couple has a had an outside uh, reception, and it started to rain a little bit, and so, like, I'm literally standing on the dance floor, just, like, just off the dance floor. Um, and so I wanted to kind of take advantage of the rain. And so the light is behind them. This is not the AD 1200 pro. This is actually the Ellen Chrome ELB 500 TTL. So still a lot of power. It's at, um, still at full power. Um, and so I have them posed facing each other. Um, but her arm is draped over his front shoulder. Uh, so what's happening is the light is hitting her arm and then reflecting back onto their faces. Um, and so I'm kind of getting this like two light type of setup with a single light um, just by using her arm as kind of like a natural uh, natural reflector to fill in the shadows on the uh, the camera side of them. So so was your light only like maybe two, three feet off the ground? Yeah, it's basically as low as the, the light stand uh, could go yeah. that I have. It, it's hidden just around their hips. And so one of my natural posing cues whenever I get them set up, as I say, face each other, hips touching. That way I know when their hips are touching, I have a good chunk of area that I could hide my light behind. Got it. That's a, that's a good tip. And then, uh, Jason, I saw uh, that light stand. I think it was in the video of you shooting in the parking lot. I think I saw the light stand there. Is that a Manfrotto nano stand or what stand is that? No, so that's a, uh, it's a cheetah stand. It's a C8 auto stand. So it's the, I believe it's the smallest version of the auto stand that they offer. So it's the the nice stand that you can just like set down and the, the legs kick out automatically. Gotcha. You know, and actually speaking of stands and stuff, um, Jesse and Moira, we, I saw you guys, well, in fact, in this last image, you had it. The, oh no, you're using a stand, a light stand there. Yeah, so that's, that's actually the same exact. Same one. There might be, a, there might be a C10. That's a 10. If yeah. we have two lights up there, okay. we use the C10. If we have one light, she just I, need it. I was going to ask you earlier, you guys had, um, when you're booming it, it looked like a, a monopod of some kind. Are you guys using a monopod or is it just the stand? The light stand? So, yeah, like Jason said, so the cheetah stand, when you pick it up, the legs just retract automatically. So to me, it's it basically is a monopod mm -hmm. when you pick it up. So it's like monopod, light stand, two in one. You don't have to screw any screws or anything. Well, Thanks. even more beneficial is like when I'm kind of tweaking poses, I can set down the light stand and let go of it. Whereas if it were a monopod, I would probably try to do the same thing and then we just all watch it fall in slow motion. Yeah, we've used monopods in the past. I mean, if you as long as you're okay lying your light on the ground, but we work in muddy places, snowy places, mm -hmm. rocky places. So I think we it, we tend to just like quickly throw it yeah. down and we would do some damage. But yeah, with the, with the stand, you can just set it down and it automatically stands up. It's, you know, it's, it's huge for us. That makes sense. I love how, how low you have that light because there's so many times where I have the Manfrotto 1040 BAC, I think is what it is, and our 10... Mm -hmm. 1004, I don't remember, but it's, uh, you know, the lowest it goes, I think is maybe four feet. And so it's closer up by the shoulders a little bit and so it's harder to hide. So I, I just like how this one seems like it goes lower, uh, which is great. Yeah, And I'm, I'm also standing on a chair. And so I have my camera up over my head because I want to frame them in the dark place. And if I was standing on the ground, their heads got too close to that water line. Um, and so as I go up, I need my light stand to even go lower in order to still hide behind Hmm. behind their hips and stuff love that i thank you for mentioning the dark space too that clean space making sure that you have that you know that clean part there that so they can really pop from it um yep again solid solid love it love it thank you. all right and jesse mora last image looks like uh actually very similar to the last lighting where you guys kind mm -hmm. of did the boom lighting overhead but there's so much to dissect in this with regards to the you know how you created the the stars and everything else are not created them, but how you can. <laughs> I'm going to say we created those. The Milky Way, <laughs> all us. <laughs> yeah. No, we, yeah, we don't put in any skies or anything. This is captured in one frame. It was a uh, Telluride ski resort. So no light pollution, camera on a tripod. Um, so if we, in, like in Jason's last one, if we had isolated them in that dark part 
of the frame and the horizon, then they could move around all they wanted and they would there would be no blurring because there's no ambient light on them. But since I sort of set them against the sky and the sky is ambient, they have to hold perfectly still to, for the whole exposure. Hmm. So instead of doing like 20 second exposure, I think I did maybe three or four seconds for this because it's very difficult to hold that still for a yeah. long time. Uh, and as a result of that, I had to crank my ISO way up to like, I don't know, maybe 4,000 or 5,000 or something like that, which then renders our light too bright, uh, even at 1 1 28th. So that then we're putting on like every mod we can onto our light to basically cut that light source down even further. Um, so we're using a full CTO to sort of shift the sky to blue. We're also, I think this might have been a grid. I can't really tell based on the light spill pattern at the bottom, uh, but then also the sphere there. Uh, one, to kind of give it that painterly look, but also, again, to cut down on that light source, because even at 1 128th, it was too bright with that high ISO. You know, this is the, the one scenario <laughs> where it'd be nice to pull out that neutral density gel, but I never yes. can find it because it's always like I never really get a chance to use it very much. Um, yes, this exactly. Would be that's, that's the perfect, I think, option in this scenario, but I'm pretty sure our camera bags were still at the venue, which was like two miles down the mountain, and we had just driven up these dirt roads. So didn't have time to go back and get it, but yeah, that, that's the way to do it for sure. Neutral that's, that's crazy. So you said uh, about five seconds, four to five seconds, something like that? Somewhere in there, yeah. Again, and, and to get them to hold still like that, because if they're moving around, there's just going to be some ghosting around against set against the sky, which can be removed in Photoshop. Um, but I'll just, I'll do a breathing exercise with them. I'll have them sort of breathe in deeply and then exhale and then hold still with the air out of their lungs because it's easier to hold still after you've exhaled. Um, so we'll just kind of like to set them at ease and, and do a nice relaxing breathing exercise. And I say, okay, and the shutter's open, hold still guys in five, four, three, and then the, the flash pops off at the rear curtain and then they can move again. Yeah, plus it's Colorado, so we're all used to doing breath work, you know. So like, <laughs> yeah. okay, everybody, we're going to meditate a little bit hiking, on your wedding day. <laughs> yoga, meditation, yeah. I love that. I love that. That's really cool, you guys. Man, I what a treat this has been to, to pick you guys' brains and to see how you create all these images. It's just there's so much here that uh, to unpack. I feel like uh, if I were to go back through this episode, there's so many little tips and things that people can pick up. Um, in fact, I was thinking... You know, I, we, we talked earlier about the workshops and stuff. In fact, I'm just going to pull it up again here. We have it still up on my screen. Um, the, the two workshops that you guys have. But I was thinking, if somebody's watching this six months from now, do you guys constantly, you know, and these workshops have already passed, let's say, are you constantly updating this page? to? Put, are you doing a lot more workshops and things like that? Yeah, every time we're constantly updating it. We do mentoring online, mm -hmm. uh, which is year round uh, workshops are released kind of as they're planned. Mm -hmm. We only plan about a year in advance. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this if is you the... go to the education page and if we don't have anything actively happening, there is a sign up link where you can drop your email um, and we will let you know first when we're working on something or planning yeah. a new workshop. Um, we don't spam. Uh, and you can unsubscribe at any time. That's really important to me because I think we all get way too many emails as it is. But yeah. um, that's probably the best way to keep in touch because we'll we'll also do advanced sales uh, with our, our email list. Nice, nice, nice. And then Jason, do you have a place as well that people, again, if they're watching this six months from now, those workshops have passed. Where, do you... Yeah, if you just go to vincentimages.com backslash workshops, um, and I'm working on a more official page uh, to, that's going to offer a little bit more resources and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, and then I also have a Patreon account that I do kind of monthly education on. Uh, if anybody's interested in that, it's just like a, a little $10 a month and you get access to all the past content and all future content as long as you're subscribed to that as well. Nice. So you're doing that. Okay, got it. Cool. Yeah. Very, very cool. Love it, you guys. There is so much good stuff here, like I said, in this episode and then just like places to go and find out more about what you guys are doing. And I, I'm hoping that, you know, people can see this with enough time that they can even go and check out your workshop in October as well as the one in November, um, October 17, 18, 19, and then November 12th. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. Yeah. Cool. Remembrance Day in the UK. It, what's it called? Remembrance Day? Remembrance Day. Yeah. Ah, very cool. Very cool. Um, what a treat. 
You guys, I appreciate you taking the time to to do this with me today and uh, and have this. Thanks for having us. It was awesome. Yeah. There's there's just so much stuff. By the way, Jason, before we started in the pre-show, just chatting, you gave everyone kind of a thumbs up. I want to I want to see your little thumbs up again. This is the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> all right. now, now somebody who's watching this all the way to the end is gonna be like, no. <laughs> like you watch too far yeah. Yeah, no. thanks so much trevor for taking yeah. the time i mean on, on behalf of maura and, and bob, uh, and bob. <laughs> we really appreciate it wait if you stand here it looks like bob's painting trevor there you right? yeah <laughs> no, it's been awesome now you've watched too far now you've watched too far yes <laughs> but but seriously appreciate all of you guys you guys are absolutely killing it out there um your your inspiration for all of the rest of us and uh, i just absolutely love it and and to be able to pick your brains and just see these images and kind of learn behind the scenes and see how you guys are creating it um it's so inspiring so appreciate all of you thank you oh, thanks so much man we appreciate the time oh, yeah appreciate you Absolutely. So, guys, if you're watching these How I Shot Us for the first time, go subscribe. <laughs> go, go check out. We have a whole playlist. I think I think this is like episode 138 or something like that. We're in the 130s, which is kind of crazy. But there's so much good stuff out there, guys. Go check it out. And uh, be sure, if you have any questions or anything, um, leave those questions and comments uh, below. And, and I'm sure uh, if I can't help you out, I, I will get these amazing folks to come in and, and see if they can't answer your question as well. But even better... Go check out their workshops. Go pick their brains and uh, get to meet them in person as well. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. And uh, Jason, Moira, Jesse, appreciate you guys. You guys have a, a wonderful day, okay? You too. Thanks, guys. All right. Bye. Take care, guys. Bye. <laughs>